Hi folks, the Filipina Bee here. And most of you know, I pride myself on always telling both sides of the story, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Of course, I like to show you all the wonderful stuff about the Philippines, but I don't shy away from pointing out our flaws and shortcomings either. It's my job to inform you about everything that goes on here, even when it's something I wish I didn't have to drop a truth bomb on. In this case, I'm talking about the serious lack of critical thinking skills of the average Filipino. Our inability to reason logically is why so many of us actually believe in fairies and trolls and we often base important decisions on faulty reasoning. We tend to believe what we hear and we often adopt our beliefs without a shred of evidence. But you might be thinking, so what? Who cares if Filipinos live in La La Land half the time? Well, if you're gonna spend your life with one of us or live amongst us, it matters because you're gonna be confronted with an alien way of thinking that can drive you nuts. So once again, buckle up and get ready for a bumpy ride down a very deep rabbit hole. And some popcorn might be nice too. Critical thinking is the most reliable tool for determining fact from fiction. But unfortunately, that seems to be a tool we left back in the shed. We are not the most logical people. And if we ever tried to have a rational debate with a Filipino, it might not have gone very well. We go to school, but they tell us what to think, not how to think. And that's something that needs to change. Now, much of the stuff I'm about to discuss is more common in the provinces, but an alarmingly high number of Filipinos actually believe in elves and dwarves and flying monsters with magical powers, despite zero evidence. Has anyone caught an elf, grabbed him by the toe and pulled him out of his hole? Any skeletons or carcasses to examine? Any convincing video footage? Haven't you ever wondered why not? No, of course not. And yet in 2023, so many of us actually believe these things and live our lives as if they're real. And it's not just some quaint tradition that people talk about with a wink and a nod, like your tooth fairy. Can you imagine if over 50% of the adults in your country thought that the tooth fairy was real, as well as almost every other nonsense thing? How can you have a nation that progresses, a society that moves forward when its thinking is so backward? For the first time, we have the world's knowledge in our hands. Almost every Filipino has a phone, so we can look this stuff up, but we don't bother. We'd rather go on living in a world of nonsense. I've heard foreigners describe Filipinos as childlike, and I always assumed they were referring not to our size, but to our eternally sunny dispositions, and the way we always expect a positive outcome, even when the evidence suggests otherwise. But maybe it's more than that. Maybe we're labeled as childlike because we tend to be so darn gullible. If you tell a child that a giant rabbit leaves corporately branded candy all over the house once a year, they're liable to believe you. And the same thing happens here. Just start a rumor about almost anything and it often becomes fact by the time it reaches the end of the street. No need for evidence, no need for proof, just say it. The loudest voice wins. Now, of course, it's fine to have folk traditions and harmless superstitions, but when they take the place of reason and common sense, it can have real consequences. And there's also a snowball effect, where people who believe in one false thing usually end up believing others. Even my own family isn't immune from illogical thinking, something that frustrates me to no end. Let me give you some examples from my own childhood that show the danger. When I was about nine years old, I had a persistently high fever. My mom couldn't cure it using her regular method of blazing leaves on my forehead. So she decided to seek professional help from the local witch doctor. His methods were much more modern and effective. He smeared his saliva all over my body. At least I hope it was saliva. Then he blew on the top of my head and sent me on my way. The fact that I eventually recovered only strengthened my mom's belief that she'd make the right choice in medical care. But what if I had a life-threatening illness? A high fever lasting for days is nothing to be taken lightly. 
But fortunately, I'm still here today. No thanks to the witch doctor. Several years later, I was at a fiesta when a little boy started choking on his food. He ran around holding his throat while his mother ran around looking for a cat. Yep, a cat. Because she believed that in order to keep a child from choking to death, the proper course of action was to rub a cat's paw on his neck. Forget the Heimlich maneuver, a technique that's proven to save thousands of lives. Just believe some silly superstition that's never been proven to do anything besides irritate a cat. The boy survived by coughing out his food. But even if his mom's advanced medical technique had worked, you better not thank Fluffy the cat by kissing him because it's also believed that kissing a pet will make you go insane. So many rules to remember. You probably also noticed that Filipinos rely more on emotion than reason. So you might assume that our inability to think logically is a female thing. But I hate to tell you, it's both sexes. A few years ago, an old ex-boyfriend showed up at my family's house looking for me. I'd already told every member of my family that I'd moved on. And under no circumstances were they to give him any information about my whereabouts. And especially, not my phone number. But apparently, the piglet and sack of rice he brought turned my family's head. And against my explicit instructions, my oldest brother was only too happy to provide him with my phone number. Yes, my privacy was sold for a baby pig and some food. So I guess I'm not worth as much as I'd hoped. When I found out about it, I confronted my brother about his betrayal. But since the guy hadn't called me yet, my brother claimed I had no reason to be upset. His logic was that until the guy phoned me, no offense had been committed. So why was I angry? So I gave him a simple analogy. I said, what if I put a loaded gun in your baby's crib, but she didn't fire it yet? Does that mean that until she does, I didn't do anything bad? Somehow, he immediately knew that was wrong, but still didn't see what that had to do with him. And the logic of my analogy was totally lost on him. My mom even jumped to his defense and had the nerve to end the conversation by reminding me not to sing while cooking. Or I'd have the bad luck to never marry anyone at all. Well, here's my superstition, Ma, which is much more useful and accurate. You will have bad luck if you stick a fork in a toaster. And it's backed up by evidence and data too. But it's not just Filipinos that pay the price for faulty reasoning. I recently talked to a foreigner that was beyond frustrated because his wife wanted to sell their fairly new car. She'd already had three accidents while driving it. So she was convinced that the car must be unlucky. She called her family and they confirmed that the car must be cursed. So despite the fact that it was only two years old and they'd take a big loss on it, she was adamant about trading it in. Not one single thought about the ability of the person driving it. It just had to be the result of a curse. Another guy told me how he got yelled at by his wife for storing a recently washed rice cooker upside down. So it'd drive faster and not have droplets of water sitting in it that could potentially collect bacteria. Bad move, dude. Don't you know that setting a rice cooker upside down means your family will suffer famine? Somehow, in your modern Western home with a three-car garage? Oh well, don't let little things like reality get in the way. And I bet that bacteria tastes pretty good after all. But I'm not just talking about silly superstitions. I'm talking about more practical reasoning, like bringing the right tools to do a job, or ordering supplies before you ran out of them. In college, I had a roommate who used to buy the tiny single-serving pouches of soy sauce and almost every day, she'd walk to the store to buy one. I asked her why she didn't just buy a bottle of it, but she said it was too expensive. I explained to her that somehow she found the money to buy a little every day anyway, so why not save money by purchasing a whole bottle, which would end up being cheaper, and also save her all the walking back and forth to the store. Seems perfectly logical, right? She had no clue what I was talking about, so I just gave up. Now, of course, logical fallacies are committed by people of all nationalities, but Filipinos set the gold standard when it comes to irrational thinking. 
Here are the five most common fallacies that you'll encounter if you visit here in the Philippines and why they're so prevalent. The ad populum argument. This fallacy is the bread and butter of the average Filipino. If enough people believe something, no matter what it is, then it must be true. Well, I hate to tell you, but reality isn't a popularity contest. So believing that if you go to multiple funerals in one day, you'll die too, might not actually be true, no matter how many of your neighbors believe it. The argument from authority. Who are we to question our elders? It's just not the Filipino way. If grandma says you can't clip your fingernails because it's dark outside and you'll have bad luck if you do, then you better just put away that clipper. If you question it, you'll be met with the definitive answer, it is known. Meaning it's so obvious that you're a fool for even asking. But known by whom? Where's your evidence? Where's your research? Research? Grandma don't need no stinking research. The argument from incredulity. I can't see germs. I can't smell germs. So they obviously don't exist. Don't worry that grandpa has hepatitis. Just pass me the rest of his drink. I don't want anything to go to waste. The ad hominem. Ah, the defense of those who have no reason for their arguments. This is one you'll see a lot here. When you can't refute someone's logic, just attack their character as a distraction and let the shouting match begin. A good example of this is when I complain about all the trash being carelessly thrown onto the streets and beaches here. I suddenly had a host of Filipinos calling me all kinds of names from traitor to troublemaker. Not one of them dealt with my point, and not one of them could refute anything I said. To heck with the trash, just sweep the subject under the rug and don't talk about it. Typical Filipino thinking. The is ought fallacy, otherwise known as wishful thinking. Filipinos often assume that whatever we want to be reality will be reality. And a good example of that is the reason we gamble so much. We plan on how we're going to spend our lottery winnings in advance because we're convinced we have a really good chance of winning. Instead of simply looking at the numbers, doing a little math, and coming to a rational conclusion about the odds, we just hurry on down to buy another fistful of tickets till our lucky day arrives, even when we claim we can't afford a bottle of soy sauce. Now, as a disclaimer, not all Filipinos are illogical. But the percentage who are is a lot higher than I'd like it to be. And to all of you out there that believe in relatively harmless things like lucky charms and bad omens, I mean no disrespect. I just think the world, and my society in particular, would progress a lot faster if we realized that bad reasoning leads to bad decisions. And it might be time to put away childish things. Well, that's it for this episode. But if any of you have anecdotes about wacky thinking you've experienced, please post them in the comment section. And maybe, just maybe, you'll get someone to question their own beliefs. Till next time. If you think about it, I'm kind of like a Vulcan, using calm, cool logic to address your concerns about life in the Philippines. Like Mr. Spock, I'm a half-blood as well, with one foot in the East and one in the West, giving me the ability to meld with your mind on topics concerning the culture here. All that I ask in return is a thumbs up on this video, subscribing to my channel, and hitting the notification bell so you know when the next data has been presented for your analysis. And if you really want to become part of the crew, feel free to check out my Patreon page for bonus content and exclusive features. Oh, Jim! You look good today. Have you been working out? Oops. Pun far. Well, since it looks like I'll be busy for the next few hours, I suggest you view my other videos during my absence. Oh, so that's the captain's log. Are you gonna make an entry?